Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. So for this video, what I'm going to be doing is reacting to 10 things that WWE wants you to forget about Stephanie McMahon, courtesy of What Culture Wrestling. Going into this video, like my previous videos, I do have some ideas, maybe what we will see, but in case some of you have no idea what may be in the video, I won't give any predictions, just so I don't spoil the fun for you. But before we start it, go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. Leave a comment, maybe, of what you'd like to see next. And let's go ahead and take a look. Stephanie McMahon, the filthy, dirty, disgusting, brutal, bottom-feeding, trash bag host. Yes. Gosh, I'm never going to work for WWE, am I? Well, in for a penny, in for a pound. The billion-dollar princess is all set to become the queen of wrestling when she assumes control of the business. With for some reason, it, shall, it husband, still should be with Shane. In wrestling ranking a solid nine on the Leno scale of strong chins, and while the Lady Macbeth of WWE may be on top of the world, there are more than a few ignoble moments in her past. This list yeah, is basically probably. my WWE career suicide note. Hope you're f***ing <laughs> it. I'm Adam from WhatCulture.com, and here are ten things WWE want you to forget about Stephanie McMahon. Number 10, Kissing Bischoff. Oh, that was Bishop. so Eric weird Bishop when that happened. My Patronus, my grinning deity, the man after whom I model yeah. every single fiber of my being, the handsome, virulent tooth factory. Remember when Bischoff was the GM of Raw and Steph took SmackDown? The two would bicker constantly in a sexual tension. That was so a good time, except for toast. Yep. Well, it turns out the this two actually gave into their nonsense. feelings for one night. Good time in wrestling. One, and it was never mentioned again. It was Halloween, and Eric Bischoff broke into Steph's office disguised as her father, which already conjures so many delightful psychological quandaries. Oh my god. Eric removes his Vince mask and then grabs Stephanie for a kiss. Yep. She initially fights him off, and then it appears like she likes it, and then the two kiss on a desk. Then it's forgotten about entirely. I mean, it makes sense to me that someone would want to kiss Eric Bischoff, but you think they'd at least get a story out of it. Fun fact, Eric would then go on to kiss Linda McMahon, because L-A-D. Yep. Number nine, H-L-A. The ruthless... Hot lesbian action, yep. Like the <laughs> Grotty, but this is completely fucked all the way up. In 2003, Eric Bischoff, and again, if I had a Game of Thrones house, his smile would be on my fucking banners. He introduced a new company policy whereby two lesbians would occasionally come to the ring and kiss in front of a bunch of rowdy male fans, thereby pinning good taste to the wall and repeatedly shipping it in the stomach. At Unforgiven 2003, because of a match stipulation, Steph had to engage in HLA with two women in their underwear, rubbing her, and I have a law degree, what am I even doing here? Anyway, out came Rikishi in drag, she kissed him too, and it's all such yeah. a fear and nightmare, never mind. Number eight, the I quit mat. Speaking of public relations, what says fun Sunday night out than a father throttling his own daughter with a bit of lead pipe? At No Mercy 2003, good year for Steph. That I don't remember big daddy this match. He decided that Steffels wasn't being a very good GM and wanted her to quit. How? By making her participate in an I quit match, which, by the way, is what they'll have to do to me if they want me out of this job. I will burn all of you down before I go. It sounds like an intriguing match on paper, but in reality, oh geez, it was awkward watching. Yeah, I was gonna say it was really a pipe, weird match to watch. Her. Okay, it's yeah. A, it's just a bad nine minutes. Number seven, backstage tyrant. Being a McMahon guarantees two things: that you will walk weirdly and that you have the ability to throw around arbitrary power backstage. In 2002, Steph was made director of creative writing, and since leaving for the company, several WWE writers have come out of the woodwork to say that she is as tricky to work for as it is for Run DMC to rock a rhyme <laughs> for Run at the time. The reoccurring problem that Steph had with the writers is that she believed they should not act like marks. In wrestling terminology, a mark is someone who... Why not? That's what the wrestlers are selling. Steph would chastise her writing staff for acting like marks if they complimented a wrestler on his work in Japan or talked about bleeding or talked about any aspect of the business. Once, Court Bauer used the term blading, and for being an outsider and using an insider term, Steph forced him to go around the locker room and apologize to each and every wrestler personally. That's Number six, up. the affair with Triple H. I don't know if you've noticed this, but Triple H and Stephanie McMahon are an item. I know they try and hide it on TV, but the clues are there if you look for them. There's one, there's another, <laughs> this is a big clue. Triple H and Steph were thrust together for the McMahon Helmsley regime, and a relationship between the two blossomed Jeez. like a flower made of veiny meat. Problem yeah. was, Triple H was engaged to China at the time, and in 2001, according to the interview that China has had since leaving the company, she discovered the affair, contacted Vince, who replied, Well, I guess the jig is up. As she and told then the fired her. Let go from the company shortly afterwards. Now, the exact circumstances of China's departure from the company are spotty at best, but the affair occurred 
and since China's death in April, WWE will definitely want it forgotten. Yeah, that's Number five, a that up. charity tweet. Steph is oh god, I remember this charity tweet, you bitch. Be closer to a doom cloud than a person, but because she's one of the biggest heels in the business, but also the face of WWE's numerous charity drives. WWE have been incredibly present in the charity sector in recent years with Thea Star, Susan G. Komen, Connor for the Cure, and many other worthy causes, which is great. Until you see this tweet yeah. sent by Stephanie McMahon, in which she quotes Biz Stone, co-founder of Twitter, and saying, Philanthropy is the future of marketing. It's the way brands are going to win. Well, doesn't that just throw every single charitable thing that WWE's ever done in a much darker light? It's all a calculated marketing campaign. Well, I mean, I mean all the charity work is obviously to but don't make money in the end. Number four, the boob slip. Ah, boobs. Here's to them. Everyone raise a glass. Stephanie McMahon has a pair of boobs, which have fluctuated in size over the years, as eagle-eyed Chris Jericho often took delight in pointing out. Well, it turns out that her boobs quite like the attention and decided to go into business for themselves on an episode of SmackDown. In 2002, the March 14th episode for the Fact fans amongst us, Triple H was feuding with Jericho and Stephanie at the time and had the billion dollar princess set up for a pedigree when her lady boobs fell out of her dress. It's been on the network, sorry perverts, but live it was briefly out there for all to see. Number three, the incest angle. Vince McMahon is crazy yeah. than a pair of rabid bats. And oh, God, yeah. Is this... and the one time what do you just say if somebody pitches you this idea? Seriously, this actually full-on happened. Steph herself spoke out about it on a DVD about Vince. She was pregnant at the time, and ever the bat <laughs> showman, Vince pushed to have himself be revealed as the father. No, seriously, I believe this it. actually happened. Yeah. What happens in Vince's head? It must be like the Battle of the Somme in there. When Steph said, no, Vince, no, my actual father, you're not going to be the dad of my unborn baby, Vince said, well, okay. How about Shane? How about Shane? Yeah. Why must you be so mad all of the time, Vince? Number two, the 9-11 comment. After the horrific attacks of 9-11, WWE... This would have been my guess for number one. Thing. People throw a lot at the company, but by organizing a live SmackDown mere days after the attack, the first mass assembly of its kind since, Vince and Co. sent a brave and powerful message that we are not afraid. That's great. It's just a shame that during that episode on September 13th, Steph put her foot in her mouth in a big way. She did a piece to camera about how a few years ago, her family also came under attack. The incident she was referring to, the steroid trial, where Vince was taken to court for allegedly distributing... Yeah, what, what, why did they want that air? Whether attempted empathy or not, comparing the deaths of thousands to your rich father being taken to court for drug distribution is a hugely tasteless and frankly delusional thing to say. And number one... Oh! And so the yeah! In my coffin bang. Forgot about right, this one. Right, so this has always been merely a rumor, but it's one of the most persistent and shocking in wrestling, so we're just gonna tell you. In November 1994, Macho Man Randy Savage. I believe it to be a rumor. I mean, one of the reasons for his departure. So many that people are saying that's not true. Like, like how, how can you get that many people to say that's not true? In 1994, so. Oh dear. A lot of oh dear. Yeah. WWE have never breathed a word on whether or not this rumor is true, but it's worth noting that of all the characters to leave WWE for WCW back in the 90s, all of them came back except for the Macho Man. He was never seen again on live TV and scarcely mentioned until after his death. This is putting it him until together and coming up with five. Forever to get into the, the Hall of Fame. Definitely something WWE want you, me, and everyone to stop talking about. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm off to make my front door as sledgehammer proof as possible. <laughs> And that's our list. So, yeah, looking at that video honestly made me cringe a little bit just because I feel like a lot of that is like how Stephanie McMahon actually is in person. She does kind of seem like a person who enjoys being in charge a little bit too much. And then like some of the stuff when she was SmackDown general manager with like Eric Bischoff and that I Quit match, like that, that stuff is just weird. But nonetheless, it was a really entertaining video. And a big shout out again to the one who suggested that I react to this video. I do greatly appreciate it. It was really entertaining to watch. And like I said before, if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe. Maybe leave a comment of what you'd like to see next. And I'll see you guys for the next one. All right, bye.